of the Lord. So I used to work construction in the summers when I was in college. And one of the phrases that we would say that's kind of stuck with me is, we ain't building a church. In other words, right, it not, might not be perfect, but it's close enough. Right, it also communicates that there's a clear separation between what is sacred and holy and what is ordinary. In tonight's gospel, we hear Jesus sending out 72 of his disciples who responded to his invitation to go before him. Now, we might think that these are the leaders, the prominent people, the most likely to succeed, but that's not true. Jesus sent Ordinary people, people who were broken, people who had doubts, people who had fears, people like you, people like me, right? And Jesus didn't send them to sacred places and holy places. He sent them to very ordinary places, to streets and towns and homes. So we have to ask ourselves, do we want to be counted among the 72? Because we are invited. Think about at the end of every Mass what we hear. We hear it so often we don't even think about it. Usually it's said by the deacon, And there's four options. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Go forth, the mass is ended. Or just go in peace. What do all four of those have in common? Go. We are a sent people. And what we're invited to do is to take what we receive here at the Mass, Jesus, and share Jesus with the world around us. Others should have a little bit of a glimpse of who Jesus is because they know us. I think often when we think about being on mission, we think about going to a third world country or going to an area with extreme poverty. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus invites us on a mission in the midst of our ordinary life. I recently got a note from a friend And he had sent it to a lot of people, all of his his friends and co-workers and some family members. And he said, as many of you know, I'm facing a really difficult medical diagnosis. I have a terminal illness. And he said, I am asking for prayers for healing. But he said, more important than that, I'm asking that you will pray for me that I am kind to my wife and my kids who have loved me so well. He said, I ask you to pray that I can be kind to the healthcare workers who've been through so much already. And he said, you know, if you're somebody who doesn't believe in the power of prayer, You can just send cash. I bring up that story because I know this is a man who's on mission. Who really desires to share Jesus with others. But he's also very light-hearted about it. He does it with great joy. 
we really don't need any more crabby Christians. It doesn't attract anybody to the good news. And you maybe might be saying to yourself, you know, okay, I want to be on mission, but I don't really know what that looks like. Well, let me offer a simple solution, maybe. Maybe give it a whirl. You're going to see lots of people over this holiday weekend, I have a feeling. Right? In some of those interactions you'll be looking forward to, and others, maybe not so much. But I suggest that you take one of those interactions, and as it's happening, invite Jesus in. Say, Jesus, either I'm really looking forward to this, or Jesus, I'm really dreading this. Give me the words to say, to treat this person the way you would treat. And I think what you will find is that a very ordinary encounter will be transformed into something that is sacred and holy. That is what it means to be on mission. To invite Jesus into all those parts of our life. And so tonight... I propose that we pray for the grace to be truly a people sent, a people on mission. And if we do that, we will, in fact, be building the church.